Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is everybody all right this morning? Is everybody all right this morning? Yes, yes that's the right answer. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I don't, really don't know what to say today. We were... <laughs> some of us uh, went up to London yesterday. We are a bit thin on the ground this morning. I can see that. And they weren't even the people that came with us. <laughs> but some of us went up to Wembley Stadium yesterday for the national day of prayer and praise or worship 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 same thing isn't it and um, it was absolutely phenomenal and i've got to tell you i think that the stadium holds ninety thousand people and just to give you a picture it was over half full and it was not a bunch of old people. It covered from newborn babies to people on sticks and everybody in between. It was absolutely amazing. And I am saying it to make you jealous. Because <laughs> I wish you could have been there and been part of it because it was absolutely brilliant but so this morning I'm just going to read a few verses from Psalm 103 before we start and it says this David says this praise the Lord I tell myself with my whole heart I will praise his holy name praise the Lord I tell myself and never forget the good things he does for me he forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He ransoms me from death. Ransom is a word we don't really use very much, but it means he rescues me from death. That's a brilliant thing. He fills my life with good things and he surrounds me with love and tender mercies. My youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of us feel like we need a bit of that today? Our youth is renewed like the eagles. We serve an amazing God, and I think so many times we just forget it. We forget, and we feel like we're just in this little box called Bethany. And there's a much bigger space out there, and it's filled with more of the same of us. So because of that, we're going to worship God this morning, and I need some help, because I can't jump. I did yesterday, but I can't jump today. <laughs> I need some smaller people to come and join me. Come on. Come on. Because this, I think, is my favorite. Let me move this children's song that we do and just because the little ones or the younger ones are out here it doesn't mean that the older ones can't do what the little ones do and the first song we're going to do this morning is jumping for Jesus did you hear what I said jumping for Jesus are you ready to do that yeah oh you don't sound you're not alive this morning are you ready to do it, Tyler? You going to jump? Yes, is the answer. Come on, you've got bags of energy. Come on, Scarlett, you can jump. You've always got bags of energy too. Let's get it on then, shall we? At the back. We need you all to stand. And you need to jump and clap. Come on. Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray God thinks you're really great, you've made his day He loves me just the way I am, in fact he is my biggest fan Jump up and 
wave your arms and shout hooray Good practice I want to hear you much louder And I want to see some jumping adults Come on Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray God thinks you're really great, you made his day He loves me just the way I am, in fact he is my biggest fan Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray A little bit better Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray God thinks you're really great, you made his day me just the way I am, in fact he is my biggest fan Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray No, we're jumping, jumping, jumping on too quick Here we go, sorry We're jumping, jumping, jumping for Jesus we're jumping, jumping, jumping for joy. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for Jesus. Come on. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for joy. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for Jesus. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for joy. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for Jesus. And again. We're shouting, shouting, shouting for joy. Up and wave your arms and shout hooray God thinks you're really great, you made his day He loves me just the way I am, in fact he is my biggest fan Jump up and wave your arms and shout hooray Father God, we thank you this morning that, yeah, we can jump up and we can wave our arms and we can shout hooray, but Father, I thank you that you are our biggest fan. Father, when we think we're rubbish, you're there trying to encourage us to tell us how much you love us. And Father, I thank you that you showed us how very much you loved us when you died on the cross and you rose again and you offered us forgiveness. But the thing is, we have to accept that forgiveness. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. So Father, I pray today, you will show each one of us, no matter how tiny we are or how big we are, how very much you love us and how very much you're for us. And we hear in the Bible, it says that if you were for us, who can be against us? Father, I thank you that you're way bigger than anything that can hit us or come against us. I thank you that your arms are much bigger, that can, that can surround us with your love when we come up against so many hard and difficult things. I thank you that no matter what our age, we can rely on you. We can count on you when other people we've put our trust and faith in fail us. Father, let us realize who you are, that you're a great big God. We sing it enough. Father, I pray we'll start believing that you're as big as we sing you are. In Jesus' name, amen. More jumping.
children. Father God, we thank you so much for church. We thank you so much that we're all welcome and that you love us all, no matter whether we're tall or whether we're not so tall. Dear God, we thank you for the children and for the young people, and we pray that you'll be with them, that you'll look after them, and I pray that what their teachers teach them will be really useful, will be really helpful. I know in Angela's class, they're going to be talking about Noah and Noah's Ark, and I think that's a really exciting story. Dear God, I just pray that you'll be with them and look after them. We pray this in your dear name. Amen. If you've, uh, if you've got a Bible handy, uh, you might find it useful uh, during the, the, the sermon. We're going to look this morning at the book of Isaiah, um, Isaiah chapter 56, which is sort of near Psalms and uh, along a bit towards the New Testament. So if you do want to follow, um, get, grab a Bible. If you want to just sit there and look at me, that would be nice as well. If you want to go to sleep, then uh, please feel free to do that now. Um, I will warn you if you wear false teeth that one lady fell asleep many years ago and um, her teeth fell out uh, during the sermon and that was embarrassing for her but not embarrassing for me so um, you're entirely, um, you can do whatever you will enjoy during the sermon. There's a verse uh, in Isaiah 56 and verse 7 and it says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Let's read uh, from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 through to 8. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand. And my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people, and let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, to the, eunuch, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me, who hold fast to my covenants, to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name, better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship him. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenants, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. May the Lord bless uh, his word. It's not my word, it's his word and help us to understand it. As I've already said, um, yesterday we were in London. Uh, you might sit there and go, oh, not that again. Uh, but we had a, an absolutely incredible time praying within the region of 40,000 other Christians. I've got to say, uh, it took me back from when I lived in Birmingham because I've never seen quite so many black people in one particular place. <laughs> And you do get used to seeing uh, a, a Maddie and perhaps a few others, but do you know, they're so wonderful. And we must appreciate uh, different cultures because they, 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 were, um, they said to pray in threes and fours. And do you know, I could hear this noise from two rows behind me. I looked back and I thought it, it was adults. And there were three little girls praying together, around about Hannah's age or a little bit younger. And they were just praying the Lord's Prayer, and they were praying it out loud, and they were praying it passionately, and they were praying it from their hearts. 
And, and we had uh, many, many other people that were just worshipping God in an expressive way that, that showed their deep love for their Saviour and for their Lord. And you know, we come to church in Caldicott's. And we amble in. We struggle to wake up in the mornings. We're not quite sure what we're doing. We're slow, we're lethargic, we're apathetic. This means we, the carpet people as well, the preacher, the drummer, the music group, the pianist, the people at the door, the deacons, elders, we're all a bit apathetic from time to time and we've got to hold our hands up and say, yes, that's me. Don't just sit there and go, oh, yeah, well, whatever. I'm what I am. I'm always like this. I've been like this all my life. Well, get over it. Come on, I want to be in a gospel church this morning. Let's paint our faces black. Let's move a little bit. Let's jump a little bit. Let's shout, hallelujah. You know, every time someone said something from the stage, there was a praise the Lord. And then someone would get up and they'd, oh. It's better than any football match I've ever been to. Because you've always got one half that's unhappy at a football match. It's normally my team. But you know in that stadium of 40,000 people, do you know what the prayer was? For unity. And there were so many different traditions. And I know that the Pentecostals must have got up the, uh, the Anglicans' noses. And the Baptist and the Methodist weren't quite sure whether they were friends. But you know, the prayer was for unity. We are friends. The prayer was for unity. And the prayer was for unity, not just in that stadium. But, and I love this phrase, and I've got to share it with you. The prayer was that the dots would be joined up. And that spoke to me. And that was right at the beginning, wasn't it, Ron? And right at the beginning. And I thought, I can go home now. God's spoken to me. Because I don't want to go to any event or any place where I've got to spend money or to church where God's not going to speak to me. And God, the guy was talking about unity and he said, God has said, we've got to join up the dots. And I look at us as a church and I think, what chance have we got for unity in Caldicott, in Wales, in Great Britain, if our dots aren't joined up? Do you want to join up your dot neck with the person next to you? I won't tell Kim, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're, we're, we're so separate, aren't we? We're so divided as people. And the prayer was for unity. And it was a passionate prayer. It was a heartfelt prayer. How many times have we been involved in church situations where there's been division? Come on. How many times have we been involved with Christians where there's been division? Where there's been pain, where there's been arguments, where there's been difficulties? And the prayer now is to bring God's people back together. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And you know, I've got to say, and this isn't a revelation from God, it's sometimes your fault. And you know, this is even more dramatic. It's sometimes my fault. Don't look shocked. I'm not perfect. But the prayer was also for change. That the things that we kept doing, the things that we'd always done, that the way that we'd always done things, no, sometimes we've got to change. And there was a lovely section um, with the young people. And for most of the adults, they would say, if they were asked afterwards, what moved them most was to see young people on fire for the Lord. That's what touched me, and to see uh, young people around the stadium. And I'd nipped out to, um, I hadn't gone out to eat more food. I'd nipped out to, get, to go to the toilet, because we were there for four or five hours. And it was something about a Gideon, the Gideon movement or the Gideon prayer movements or the Gideon youth prayer movement. And um, they showed dots on the map of Great Britain as to where these prayer movements were occurring. And I got back from my uh, short spell in the toilet and Jackie said to me, um, there's only one dot in Wales. And it was North Wales. 
It's probably where Ron had been on one of his train trips, but I don't know where, where it was, Wrexham or somewhere at the top, I don't know. And Jackie said, how sad, how sad. What state have we become in that there wasn't any red dots in South Wales at all? And the prayer was for salvation. Yesterday, the prayer was that people would become Christians. How many times have you prayed for your friends? How many times have you prayed for your loved ones? How many times have you prayed for the person that you get into bed with every day or every night and said, Lord, bring that person to Jesus? How many times? Keep going. How many times have you prayed for your neighbor? How many times have you prayed for a work colleague? And the prayer was for love, that we would love the unlovely. That when we're out on the streets, when we're out in work, when we're out doing the things that we do, our prayer would be for those that are different to us. Those that perhaps society rejects, society judge, judges, and no one wants anything to do with. But you know what's beautiful is that the Bible brings this all into perspective. And if you open up your Bible now with Isaiah 56, you'll start to realize that prayer is for the foreigner. The house of the Lord is for the foreigner. The house of the Lord is for the eunuch. And when we see um, in verse 2 of uh, chapter 56, it says, Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. You see, Jesus said that where two or three are gathered, I will be there in their midst. I will be present with them. Blessed is the man who does this. What do you do in your relationship with God? Verse 3, let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. When we understand the Old Testament, we think it's all about the Jews, it's all about God's people, it's all about Israel. But when we talk about the foreigners, we're talking about all those people that aren't Jews. We're talking about all those people that weren't Israelites, that weren't part of God's people, the covenant people. But do you know what God is saying here, and this is beautiful? They're all welcome. They're all welcome. They're all invited. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And when we prayed yesterday, and when we prayed for our families, when we prayed for our friends, when we prayed for our, our, our communities, when we prayed for our countries, do you know we had to do something very, very dramatic? We had to pray for the other churches in our town. If we can't pray for one another, what hope have we got for praying for those outside? You see, prayer is not just offering a few choice and trite words to God. Your mouth offers what's in your heart. Your mouth offers what's in your heart. And the foreigner was welcomed by God. And you know, I, I, I laughed at this next section, and perhaps you shouldn't laugh when you read the Bible because you've got to be serious and, and dress in grey. But I laughed at that. Um, the, the eunuch. <laughs> and let not any eunuch complain. Do you know what a eunuch is? <laughs> Aid. You know you've got it now, haven't you? If anyone wants to volunteer, I don't mind. I've got a sharp knife. They don't, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want to shock you, Anne, but it, it's not there, is it? It's not happening. Um, and it was meant to help them with their um, relationship with God. But uh, the commentary that I looked at said that the eunuchs were excluded in many areas. Well, one area in particular, but in many areas, the eunuchs were excluded. And let not any eunuch complain. <laughs> you know, we complain, don't we? 
We're complainers. We complain about our husband. We complain about our boyfriend. We complain about our friend. We complain about our food. I complained about the traffic in London. Where do all these cars come from? Ron complained about his sat-nav that took him out of Wembley and then back into Wembley. I don't know why he needed to go back, but he sort of went around. And we complain about things, don't we? Let not any unit complain and say, I am only a dry tree. I just love that. Print that out and stick that on your fridge. And say to God every morning, I am more than a dry tree. I am more than a dry tree. My identity isn't whether I can have children or not. My identity is because Christ loves me. And I have a relationship with him. To the eunuchs who keep the Sabbath, this is what the Lord says, who choose what pleases me, who hold fast to my covenant. Come on, you can put yourself in this picture, can't you? You can put yourself in this. To the eunuchs who keep the Sabbath, to the eunuchs, to the Welsh people, to the English people, to the Caldecott people, to the people that live in the big houses in the church and the smaller houses, to the people that have got children that haven't got children, to the people that are married that aren't married. Hold fast. To my covenants. Hold fast to the promises of God. Hold fast to your faith. Because that's what gets you through. That's what gets you through. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name. Better than the sons and the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. I just love that. Your name is everlasting. You're not going to be cut off. You're not going to be excluded. You're not going to be banished. But he wants to know you and he wants a relationship with you. And do you know what God wants to do in your life? He wants to bless you. He wants to abundantly bless you. And give you things that you never dreamt or imagined God could ever give you. You might think you're just made for something. There was a young lad from Caldecott, still lives in Caldecott. I won't say who he is because some of you might know him. And um, he's grown up now. He's in his uh, 20s. And I said to him once, what do you want to do with your life? And he said, I want to sweep the car park in washbones. That's what I want to do. That's what I want my job to be. And I felt so sad. And I still know the lad, still see him around. He doesn't sweep the car park in washbones. He doesn't work. Washbournes can't afford a car park sweeper, can they? We feel very sad about what's happened there. God wants to bless you. He wants to use you. He wants to grow you. He wants to develop you. What you are now isn't what he wants you to be. He wants to grow and develop you into something that you never dreamt or imagined that you could be. But you've got to take part in this relationship. And there's a few words that I've highlighted. Hold fast. Hold fast to your relationship with God. Hold fast to the promises of God. Hold fast to the love that he's put in you for others. Hold fast to sharing the good news of Jesus in the world in which we live. Hold fast when every, every possible conceivable person that you know is going in one direction. And God's calling you to be different. Hold fast when you're in school and there's 1,500 other young people that don't come to church and have anything to do with Jesus. Are the majority always right? 
I used to watch a program called Run Around when I was young. Run Around! I can't remember who presented it. I think it, Andrew will tell me. Mike Reed. Mike Reed, that's it, Mike Reed. Thank you. Andrew always remembers facts like that. And uh, I would always watch it, and they'd have to they'd ask a question. They'd have to run to certain places, and they'd have four different places they could run. And they would run to these different places, and they'd ask a question, and they'd all run to the same one. It didn't matter whether that was the right question, but you'd always get one or two that would go the other way. And very often, they would be the ones that would win. And I just encourage you to find your way. Don't just follow what everyone else is doing. Because that is so safe and that's so easy. So we come to our verse. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Someone said it yesterday. And I was so challenged. It moved me to tears. Because this house isn't a house of prayer for all nations. And this house is you. This house is me. This house is where God dwells. And it just started a whole process of thoughts about the gathered church. We sing that song, don't we? As we are gathered, Jesus is here. One with each other, Jesus is here. God's people gather together. In Acts chapter 2, in the upper room, in Jerusalem, 120 of God's people gathered together. And they <coughs> prayed together. And you know, I have to say, and I, I'm the pastor of the church, our prayer meetings are really pathetic. Really pathetic. They really are. And I lead them. And that makes me pathetic. It makes me weak. It makes me lame before God. And I believe when God's people come together to really pray, God speaks into their lives he speaks into their circumstances. He speaks direction and purpose into you. He grows you. He tells you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. He forgives you from your sin. He builds you up. He encourages you. He refills you again with the Holy Spirit. And our prayer meetings have become places where we just sort of come along and have a little bit, a bit of a chat with one another. And then we end up having a little bit of a chat with God. And then we end up then having a little bit of a close. And then we have a chat with one another. And we go home. Come on, it's got to be more than this. It's got to be so much more. And as I was thinking about this yesterday and when I got in last night late and I was up and I tried to get some thoughts around it, I realized that there are some people in our church, and I've been here for 12 years, I've never, ever prayed with you. I've never sat in a room with some of you in this church who have been coming for years and years and years. And I've never sat in a room and prayed with you. Now, the Bible also says about going to the quiet place. Go to your closet, go to your room. How hard is that closet? I'm rubbish in the closets. There's all books and shoes in our closet, but I find it really hard. But you know, when you come together with God's gathered people in the house of the Lord to pray, God speaks and God moves. And salvation comes. Healing comes, encouragement comes, blessing comes, building up comes. The ability to know what it is that God wants you to do comes into your situation. And the early church, they gathered in the marketplace. They gathered in the temple courts. And they prayed. And they praised. And they reached out. And they evangelized. I've nearly finished. It's okay. I'm not going to say too much about prayer. Because I know it's challenging. And I don't want to challenge you. Or convict you. I want God to do it. I can stand here. I'm not a politician. 
and I can harp on and harp on. And you go, John, you're harping on. If God convicts you, then you'll do it. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. You might feel very weak and very ineffective as a Christian. Your family and your children, your life, your circumstances are all difficult. I want you to look at the foundation that you're building your life on. You're struggling, you don't know what to do, you don't know who to do it with. You've got these thoughts, you've got these things happening. Well, put God first. Seek him first in his kingdom and all these things will be added to you. And I don't know whether you're like me, but when I read verses like this, I get really excited and I get really moved. Verse 31, Acts chapter 4, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This country needs to change. I want to encourage you as well that we heard yesterday that the church in Great Britain is now starting to grow. It excited me. The church in Great Britain is now starting to grow. The tide is starting to turn. But God wants to use you. And he wants to use me. And you might not know how to pray. But when your heart is moved, you'll find out how to pray. I didn't know what love was until I met Jackie. But now I know what love is. I didn't know what the Christian faith was until I met Jesus. And now my life has changed. On Wednesday nights, we're going to hold a prayer meeting. We're not going to be studying the Bible. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray passionately. We're going to pray earnestly. We're going to walk in and we're going to go into little small groups. And we're going to pray for an hour every single week. And God's laid on my heart that we've got to have at least 20 people minimum in prayer. And we're just going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And I don't care what's on the telly. I don't even care what the weather is. I do care that you've got children and that you need someone to look after them. Do you know on on Wednesday night, it really moved me. Lorraine phoned me and I'm going to finish on this and we'll pray and then we'll sing. Lorraine uh, North phoned me up and she said, John, is it prayer meeting tonight? I said, yes. I looked out the window at seven o'clock. It was absolutely hammering it down with rain. Absolutely hammering it down with rain. I looked down the car park And there was a sight that I didn't even know what it was. But it looked like somebody in a wheelchair with a person behind pushing her. And it was Clive and Lorraine. And Clive had pushed his mum up. I'm sure Clive wasn't massively keen about coming out, but Lorraine wanted to come to prayer meeting. Why did she want to come? Because she wanted to pray. And you know, she came into that room and she had this all-in-one plastic thing on and she had uh, uh, puddles in it. We could have put ducks and grown rice in the puddles that were on her. But you know, that woman, she looked outside and it didn't matter. 
And so often we look outside and we've been to work and we're tired and we've got our slippers on and we're smoking our pipe and we're saying, I don't really want to go or I'll pray at home. When God's people gather together, God things happen. And you'll be moved, you'll be stirred, you'll be challenged. And you know what? You'll be changed. I'm going to pray, we're going to sing, and then we're going to have a cup of tea. Sorry, it's been a bit long. Uh, thank you for not dropping off to sleep. I hope that it, God has spoken to you and it's not been me speaking to you. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We pray that what your word says, what you say, we will do. We'll be moved, we'll be stirred, and we'll take action in this day in which we live. Father God, we uh, pray for circumstances within the church. Um, I know that there are people this week that have been bereaved in the church, and not to mention them by name, but Lord, we know that you're a God who encourages us. You're a God that loves us. You're a God that brings peace into difficult and trying circumstances. And I pray, dear God, that you will wrap your loving arms around those people that have gone through and will continue to go through those difficult times. Father God, I just thank you that you're a God that we can turn to, a God that knows us, a God that loves us, a God that understands all the complexities of our every single moment, of our every single day. Father God, we just thank you that we know you and that you know us. We thank you for this beautiful relationship that we have with you. And Lord, I just pray that that relationship will develop. I pray that that relationship will grow. And I pray that the things that get in between you and us, that we call sin, will take away. Dear God, I pray that you will highlight in our lives the things that block you speaking to us and block that relationship that we have. And I pray, dear God, that you will help us to work harder. I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen us. I pray that you'll give us boldness when we're in work or when we're with our families to speak out your name and to believe that you are a God that changes our lives, that changes our circumstances and that you're a God that understands. Father God, I just thank you for this morning. There's a quietness about the church today. In some areas there may be a heaviness, but I pray, dear God, that you will build us up. I thank you for your word. I thank you for Isaiah. I thank you for the eunuch who was more than just a dry tree. I thank you for the foreigners, those that were outside of the uh, Israel, Israelites and the Jews that were welcomed to be part of God's people. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to push on. Strengthen us, Lord, and encourage us in the way forward. Lord, we pray for Barbara, Dave and Barbara. We pray for Barbara, uh, who's uh, there in hospital. We thank you for the operation. We thank you for the skills of the doctors and the hospitals. But we just pray for her. She'd love to be with us this morning. And we pray that this operation will and have, has been a success. Lord, we thank you. We pray all this in your holy name and for your glory.